So in the bone marrow, uh, cells, B cells that are undergoing development have to be screened for tolerance, self-tolerance. And as we saw in the last video, they gain central tolerance if they don't bind any molecules, any self-molecules in the bone marrow. So this B cell on the top, it tried to fix itself and underwent receptor editing because it had high affinity for self-molecules but uh, it couldn't be saved through, through receptor editing, so it was deleted. That was called a deletion. The cell on the bottom, it rearranged its VDJs in heavy and light chain. It has an immunoglobulin on its surface, has low or no affinity for self molecules. So it's allowed to leave the bone marrow. It has gained central tolerance. So what is this immature B cell going to do now if it's leaving the bone marrow? Well, it's gonna enter the bloodstream, enter the circulation. Is it uh, safe at this point? It is not, because it could still bind self molecules somewhere else in the body. So it was screened for self uh, reactivity in the bone marrow. Well, the bone marrow doesn't have every single protein and every single molecule, self molecule. So there are gonna be other molecules in the body that might react with this immune, um, sorry, this immature B cell. So as immature B cells enter the peripheral circulatory uh, circulation, um, it is still possible that these molecules, these B cells, will interact with self molecules. If they do, they don't have a chance to do receptor editing because the genes that are, the, uh, the recombination enzymes are turned off at this point. We don't want those on anymore now that the B cells have left. So uh, if this immature B cell with its B cell receptor recognizes self in the periphery, then it can undergo two possible fates. First, it can just die by apoptosis, and some of these cells do that. Uh, and there's another process, which we're not going to go into detail because it's not well understood. The B cell be can become energic. So an energic B cell is a B cell that might recognize self, but it's, so it's not allowed to activate. So there are B cells in the body that um, do recognize self, and they're around for a couple days or maybe weeks, and they react to self, but they never attack self. So energic B cells are B cells that are allowed to live, that recognize self, but are not, never allowed to activate against self. Very strange, uh, but don't worry too much about it. So we're gonna talk about the ones that don't bind self in the periphery, and that's great. So these B cells have gained peripheral tolerance. They don't bind molecules that they've encountered in the bloodstream in um, anywhere else. So now what's going to happen? Uh, is it home free? Is this B cell done? No. It has to find and enter a lymph node or some other secondary lymphoid tissue, such as the mucosal associated lymphoid tissue, the bronchial associated lymphoid tissue, or the gastrointestinal associated lymphoid tissue in order for the cell to survive and finish the process of maturation. So there's a lot of competition going on here. The cells get a few days to circulate through the circulatory system, through the blood, and go to where B cells go to work. B cells go to work in lymph nodes and lymph tissues. If this cell can't find a lymph tissue to enter, then it's going to die within a few days. So there's a lot of competition with, between B cells because uh, it's not easy to travel from the bloodstream into lymph to, uh, nodes. So there are a lot of cells competing for access to lymph nodes and lymph tissues. So about 30 billion uh, B cells a day um, start this process of leaving the bone marrow and trying to find uh, a lymph tissue in order to enter to complete the maturation and development process. So there's a lot of competition between B cells here. So let's say this immature B cell, it's traveling in the circulatory system, it's in the bloodstream there at the bottom. Well, at the top, there's the lymph node. So there's a special uh, blood vessel in a lymph node called the HEV, high endothe uh, endothelial venule. So if you remember capillaries and you remember capillaries merge into venules, which merge into veins. So at the, in the high endothelial venule, that is the access point where B cells can leave the circulatory system and enter the lymph tissue. So how do cells leave the blood and enter tissues? So here, this B cell knows where to go. It knows to stop and follow a trail of breadcrumbs because of a chemokine called CCL27. I'm sorry, CCL21. So there are cells that are present in the lymph node, in lymph tissue called stromal cells. And these cells release a chemokine, CCL21. 
um, similar to a C CXCL8, that which attracts neutrophils, CXCL21 attracts B cells, specifically immature B cells and mature B cells as well. So there is a receptor on the surface of B cells called CCR7. So CCL21 will bind to CCR7. And when a B cell detects that chemokine, it will follow it like a trail of breadcrumbs, it's like a chemo attracted to and enter the lymph tissue. So there are actually a number of cells that produce chemokines to attract B cells to where they work, right? That's where B cells will do their job is they go in the lymph nodes and look for things to bind. There are other cells called dendritic cells, which are releasing chemokines, CCL21, as well as CCL19. Those are also going to bind to receptors on the surface of immature B cells. And once that occurs, the B cell will enter the lymph tissue. And that's great. Is it done? Still not done. One more thing's left to do. This B cell needs to find a follicular dendritic cell. It's a special kind of cell that's found in a lymph uh, tissue, lymph nodes. This cell secretes a chemokine and it's going to try to draw over the B cell. So it's releasing a chemokine called CXCL13. That's going to attract the B cell to go toward it. And when the B cell goes toward it, the FDC, the follicular dendritic cell, releases a activating factor called BATH. So that's B cell activating factor. So it's kind of like a cytokine, especially for B cells. So it's released by follicular dendritic cells. It's going to um, bind the BAF receptor on the surface of B cells. So this is proven that this B cell is worthy of maturation. It's worthy to become a full-fledged B cell. So once BAF, this B cell activating factor, um, binds the BAF receptor on this B cell, this B cell finally finishes the development and maturation process, process. So it's now a mature B cell. So what does that mean, a mature B cell? Well, we start out this process to generate uh, B cell receptors on the surface, and they're of isotype IgM and IgG. I'm sorry, IgM and IgD. I should get that right. And they, this, uh, these antigen binding receptors uh, are going to go and search for antigen to bind. So now that this cell has finished the maturation process, it will leave the lymph node, enter the bloodstream, and circulate between blood and lymph nodes until it find a, um, finds a match. So the B cell, we can finally call it a naive B cell. So it's not ever encountered any antigen yet, and now it's on its uh, patrol. And so what naive B cells do with their IgM and IgD on their surface is they go between the circulatory system, blood, they enter secondary lymphoid tissues, so they enter your lymph nodes, uh, or your BALT or GALT or MALT, and what they're going to do is use their B-cell receptors to see if they can bind anything with some high affinity or some affinity, right? And if they don't bind anything, well, they'll move to the next lymph node. And so the, with the, the lymphatic system, you've got lymph nodes, um, that drain into other lymph nodes, that drain into other lymph nodes, and eventually it will drain back into the circulatory system. So B cells, and you can co cover back in chapter one, uh, can circulate between the blood circulatory system and the lymphatic system. And they do this looking for their binding partner, their antigen. Now, um, do these B cells last forever? No, the half-life of a mature B cell is about 100 days. If the cell doesn't find a match in about 100 days, well, maybe that antigen binding site that it would generated through the antibody diversity mechanisms of VDJ recombination, choosing a different heavy and light chain, structural diversity, maybe this antigen binding site's never going to find an antigen to bind. And you know what? That's okay. We can get rid of the cell. Um, so this cell B cells actually die all the time by apoptosis, even mature naive B cells. Why do they die? They never find a match. And so they circulate in the body for about 100 days or so, and they don't find a match, they die by apoptosis, and that's okay because we have billions of B cells that will replace it with, again, unique and interesting antigen binding sites.